Hi everybody, it's Miriam Shulman, Shulman Art, and today I am going to show you how I paint irises in watercolor. And for all my Facebook fans who were disappointed last time they didn't get to see my face, here I am. And most of the time you're going to see my hands and the watercolor. So let's get started. Okay, so first I'm plugging White Flower Farm. Beautiful catalog. I hate to admit, I don't think I've, I've ordered flowers from there in a long time, but I love their catalog. So hopefully this will plug them today and some gardeners out there are going to fall in love with some of these flowers and want them for their own garden. And right now I'm looking for irises. So I never copy anything exactly of what I see in here. This is just inspiration. So you'll see it will not be infringing on the photographer's rights at all. I'm not tracing it. I just look at what irises look like and that's all I really do with the cat with the catalogs. I don't copy it. Cuz copying is bad. And meanwhile, I'm the artist, not the photographer. I think I can do a better job. So go. So here are some really, really pretty irises. Okay, so here I am, I'm ready to start drawing. I'm gonna put this into fast forward mode so you can watch me do this really fast. Actually, I'll just let you think that that's how quickly I draw. main thing to notice is that I pretty much do not take my pencil off of the paper. So first of all, I'm going to get my paints ready. And I had this beautiful palette, plus in addition I use a pill keeper for my, um, my colors. I'm putting in uh, Cobalt Violet Da Vinci. It's this color right here you have in the front. It's almost like a rhubarb. And then I'm trying to get out some of this other color, which I really like better, but I think it's, I think it's gone. You see the colors tend to differ by manufacturers. Okay, so I cut the back of it so I can try to squeeze some of it out. And this is why I use my pill keeper because this stuff is so precious and once it dries up, forget it, it's gone. I mean, you can try to re-wet it, um, but it's never quite as good as when it's nice, juicy, pigment and paint. Okay, so that's probably all I'm going to get out of that. And finally, I have a little bit of, um, I forget where I put it last time. No, nope. this one? Yeah, there it is. Okay. Just some, I know you can mix this yourself, but it's very convenient to have it. So Um, I noticed when I was um, using the catalog, now you can see how different my drawing is from the catalog. I just picked a few flowers and I put them where I wanted to be. But you notice how there's like this burgundy one here and here, and there's purple and there's yellow. So I want to use all three colors. So I think that's going to look great. So I'm using, um, this is called cobalt violet, but you'll see how different it is from the other cobalt violet I have. And while it's still wet, you know how much I love to make things bleed, so I'm going to go ahead and put the green in now. Look at that gorgeous bleeding happening. The yellow. Good. Okay. 
I'm trying to remember what it was exactly I wanted to do when I drew it, but it doesn't really matter. You can always change your mind. Can you see that? Okay. I'm going to put the yellow here. And I'm using both cadmium yellow and quinacridone gold. Let's use some paper towel to help lighten that up, give me that translucent effect that, that petals have. Now for the uh, flowers over here, I definitely want those purple little buds. I notice how I just I skip the white. That's leaving the white of my paper rather than adding white. Then put in some raw umber. Again, trying to get the bleeding to happen on purpose. It's kind of the fun of watercolor. So you get some very pretty bleeding effects. That's a little too harsh. I'm gonna tone that down with some brown. Now in this video, I'm not as concerned about teaching since this isn't really a class. This is just a demonstration. In my class, I'll be sure to explain every little thing I'm doing, but this is really a video I did for fun. People like to watch other people paint who are not artists or maybe not even never picked up a paintbrush. It's just relaxing to see the colors going down and I need more experience in my video camera. The last video I made, I accidentally deleted because <laughs> I didn't understand what I was doing. So just trying to uh, get comfortable with this and hope you're enjoying the process. Okay, I'm gonna do another yellow one over here. That one's looking a little greenish. I don't know if it's because I didn't rinse my brush or if my paint is contaminated. Okay. And blotting just to get that nice transparent effect. And notice how you can see the leaf through the petal. That's on purpose because petals are really transparent. husband and I have a uh, yoga tape. It's Yoga Zone actually and the yogi's always saying great. So my husband and I will walk around saying great. <laughs> no, I guess you have to be there. All right. It's a little more green. Just punch this up. And notice how I'm blotting right now and I do a lot of blotting just to give my watercolors lots of texture.
Speaking about watching people paint, when my sister and I were little, we used to love watching Bob Ross on PBS. And, you know, we weren't painters then, but we, uh, I guess, going to be a painter, I didn't know it. But we loved watching that show, or maybe I just love watching the show. And here, you can put a happy little tree. That's kind of what this garden is. Make it what you want it to be. And that's part of what an artist's job is, to show the world the way you want them to see it and make them notice things that they may not have noticed. And that's true whether you're painting politically, like abstract political paintings, you're getting them to notice things, or whether you're painting realistically, you are getting people to see the world in a different way, in an artistic way. So this video series, this is the first series I made on my own. I also wanted to mention to you my brother who is a filmmaker and I don't know if I should say this or not, but are you looking for a job right now, filmmaker? He used to work for Say Yes to the Dress and I think he's looking for a new editing job now. I'm not completely sure about that. Anyway, his name is Jeff Pfeiffer and he made me my first video on his channel, which is Jeff Pfeiffer. And it if you have a chance to look that up on his channel, it is really gorgeous. It is a painting of nude. Not me nude, of course, but a professional model. And I paint her in watercolor, and it's only about three minutes long, so after this, you should have time to hop over there and check that one out, but it's amazing. I think there's like 83,000 views on that video. All right, from my last one, let's see if you can see this whole painting. So I have two and two, and I never like to have, you know, too much two, two, twos because it starts to look like Noah's Ark. You really want to have some odd number of things to achieve a good balance. It's kind of like in decorating. hear the bleeding, sometimes I like to add just a little bit extra definition. Make sure it has nice soft edges on the top. Just give it a little punch. Okay. This watercolor is coming together really fast. So I started doing practicing these watercolor videos because the plan is I'm teaching an online course with three other artists that I recruited. They're not completely fully committed, so I don't want to say who it is just to save them and me embarrassment just in case they bow out. But I'm really excited about my this lineup and the four of us are going to be doing 
uh, tree paintings in our respective medium. So we've got a uh, mixed media artist, an oil painter, a watercolorist, and me. <laughs> no, I'm me and the watercolors. An oil painter, a mixed media painter, um, acrylic. Yeah. Okay, so right now I'm mixing up a really pretty gray color. Can you see that? Yeah. And what I do is I don't want to use a color that has nothing to do with the rest of my painting. I like to do something that's harmonious. And the only way really to do that is to use the foreground colors in the background. So I'm using the cobalt violet that I used up here in the gray. So it's, let's see if I can show you what I did. Okay, so I mixed together my um, phthalo green, this one over here, with the cobalt violet and I made that really pretty gray color. I think I need a bigger brush. Okay, so this I want to get on fairly loose and fast. And the idea with this is that some edges are going to touch, some edges are not going to touch. And what happens in the, when you put, even though I mixed it really well in my painting, when I put the color down on the paper, they start to separate. And then you see both the purple and the green mixing to a lovely gray and separating into its colors and that's what makes it so beautiful. And watercolor, I just can't get that effect with any other medium. You know, I really try with the acrylic to paint with, uh, they have Liquitex or use a lot of water, but there's just something about watercolor that moves and separates and blends in a way that no other medium can do. Okay, I need to mix some more. And of course, some of this, since I put it in the same part of my pill keeper, has the one brand of cobalt and pigments of the other. And even though it's mixed, see how the separation happens? And mixing color is so important. It's, I mean, it's hard to master, but it's so important to do this rather than buying tubes of paint. Oh, look at that texture. Because it's kind of like dyeing your hair. Those of us who dye our hair, or maybe you've seen older women who dye their hair. Um, you know, when you're young, I've got to put a little yellow into that background here. This is the whole point. You've got to get foreground color into the background color. Uh, when you're young, you have brown hair or black hair. It's not all one color. It's lots of different hairs that they're with different colors that when seen from afar look like one color, but up close you have lots of different colors. So it's the same principle is true with painting, that if you use color from a tube that's all one color, it looks like you just dyed your hair black. It's very flat. You really need to mix colors so you get all the little separations and that's what's going to make the watercolor dance and that is what's going to make the painting sing. Right now I'm just sticking a little bit extra green into my background because I don't like when it's too cookie cutter looking like like a collage. This is a watercolor. I mean sometimes I'll take my watercolors and use them as a collage element, but that's not what we're doing today. So 
So anyway, so learning to mix greens, learning to mix grays, that is the essence of watercolor painting that I'm going to teach in my class, which is going to be online. And you can find out more on shulmanart.com. I think I'm going to post the link somewhere here, right there. Okay, see how good my editing skills are later when I go back and try to put the caption in where my hand was. And these watercolor classes, they're not going to be expensive. It's going to be $36, not for one class, but for four classes, which is a really great deal. If you were to take a private class with me, well, I teach a semi-private class in my studio every week. Those ladies pay $40 every week. And even in my big group classes, they're paying like something like $25 a class also. But for this one, it's going to be every four classes are going to be $36. And you can watch those videos whenever you want whether you're in your pajamas on a Saturday morning or at night when you come home from work. And you can watch them as many times as you want. And you can stop them when the phone rings and restart it again. It's not live streaming. You don't have to be on a specific computer. You can download it to your iPad or whatever you want. And best of all, this is better than a DVD because you're going to be able to talk with me. I'm going to have an online forum where you can post your artwork if you want to. You can ask me questions about color mixing, anything you want. And so that's going to be my watercolor class. The other class, um, it's also going to have me teaching watercolor, tr tree painting, but it's also going to have three other artists who are just fantastic, and I can't wait to tell you who they're going to be. That's just going to be so fantastic. Okay, I'm just about done. Let's see what else this needs. I think it's pretty good. I just want to mess it up a little. It's a little too precious looking in my eyes, so I'm going to take some uh, purple. And splatter. Splatter up here. I don't know if I want too many dots on my yellow flowers, but just messing it up a bit. And I think I want a little bit of quinacridone gold too. And I usually end up, you know, sometimes you end up with like a hole right in the middle of your painting. Let's see. Let's try to step back from the canvas. Well, it's not a canvas. Step back from the painting for a little bit and see if there's anything else I want to change. Sometimes it's good just to overlay and glaze colors. Give it a little dynamic here and there. Mess it up a little bit there. All right, I'm done. Thanks for joining me today. And subscribe to my channel and you'll get more videos up until my class starts. I'm gonna be posting videos hopefully every week.